So you've got your handout. If you have your LinkedIn, if you, have, if you have your laptop in front of you, go ahead and log into your LinkedIn account now. And I do want this to be interactive. So if you have any questions, raise your hand, and we'll kind of take it as we go. And then at the end of the presentation today, um, those of people who have seen me present before know that when I talk, uh, when I do LinkedIn talks or social media talks, I, in addition to the expertise, I bring you, I share that I love my family, I love my job, and I also love coffee, pie, and chocolate, right? Yes. And when I present now, I bring pie with me to give away. So we're going to have my, um, a drawing at the end. I've got a couple of mini baked apple pies and a couple of mini cherry pies. And they're, um, they're individual, so you don't have to share, but you can share if you want, or you can give it away to somebody if you want. So we're gonna do a little drawing with business cards at the end today. All right, so the things I wanna talk about today are really focused on how to use LinkedIn as a nonprofit ambassador. And I heard there are several of you in the room here who aren't in a nonprofit field, but you may be interested in some techniques with regards to LinkedIn profile optimization. So what I'm gonna to share today is going to apply whether you work in a nonprofit, a for-profit, for yourself or wherever you're at in this stage of the game. And I'm gonna be focusing on mainly three areas, optimizing your profile, building your network, and empowering your volunteers. So um, part of this you'll be able to follow along and I'll tell you where you'll be able to go into your profile. And then I've got mine up on screen as well, so we'll probably pop into that profile as well. I think right now I have my company page, but I'll show you my personal profile here in a second. So um, in terms of you know this whole um, phrase optimizing your profile. My goal is to get your profile to come up in as many relevant searches as possible on LinkedIn. So really optimizing your profile is what we're talking about here. And I want you to start thinking about LinkedIn the same way you think about Google. The goal is to get to the top of the search results on Google, right? So if I'm a local pizza place and if I go into Google and I say best pizza places, I want my pizza place to come up in the top of the organic search results. Same thing on LinkedIn. So everything you're doing on LinkedIn, I want you to think about focusing those activities. And what is your goal when you're using LinkedIn? Thinking about, is it connecting with customers? Is it finding new customers? Is it just brand awareness? Is it um, soliciting for volunteers? So think about all the activities you're doing on LinkedIn and everything should point to you know, that type of a focus. And there's this great expression that I heard and I think this may help to, to, um, to clarify this point a little bit stronger. Um, thinking about sculptures, and the, a sculpture is as much about what you take out as what you leave in. Meaning on your LinkedIn profile, just don't throw everything in there because it creates a lot of clutter and confusion. You wanna really focus your profile so that it's resonating with your target audience. Um, and my background, I know we talked about this a bit, but my background is a marketer and I started doing social and digital media about 10 years ago, so everything I'm doing is gonna be through the lens of a marketer. How do we connect with your audiences, right? So let's start with your profile photo. And you've got two areas for images at the top of your profile on your LinkedIn. I'm gonna pull mine up here right now and I want you to follow along with me. So we have a headshot photo and then we have this beautiful header image that's in the background. So first let's talk about your headshot photo. What I like to look for there is that it's pleasant, smiling, professional looking, and really important here too, your face should be about 50 to 60% of the circle. The reason being about half of web traffic nowadays is done on our mobile devices. So if you're looking up somebody's LinkedIn profile on your phone, it's really hard to see them when it's from the head down to their waist. You cannot make out their face. Um, and you know, it's, it actually, there's a second point with having your, your head zoomed in as well. If you've ever noticed pictures of people kind of side by side, and one picture might be a little bit further zoomed back and one person's a little bit closer up, pay attention when you're looking at LinkedIn profiles and you'll notice this. The person who's zoomed in a little bit closer, they look more important, they look more impressive, they look more approachable. The person that's a little bit further back, they're more diminutive, they're more reserved, they don't look as approachable, they're a little bit out of touch. So when you zoom your headshot photo in, it just it creates that, that different type of impression. And if you want to follow along on, um, I don't know if you can do this on your phone, on the desktop you click on this pencil icon here, and you actually don't have to do any editing to your photo, you can just go right into your photo, and there's this zoom button that's off to the left here. And what I like to look for when I go zoom in is my, my forehead and face are basically the first two blocks there, so that's about 60% of the circle, okay? I don't know if on the phone if you can do the zoom. Is anybody trying yeah. this on their phone? Yeah, you can yeah, do it yeah. on the phone too? Okay. Yeah. And I'm going to discard my changes because I'm not doing anything there. All right, so that's one area. And if you don't have a professional looking headshot photo, 
um, meaning it's a selfie. It's a picture where I can see there's somebody's arm that's been cropped out of the side of it. Um, sunglasses, bad lighting. You know, there's so many. I have like a whole profile photo don't sheet I could show you guys, but if you're in doubt if it's the right picture, it's probably not the right picture for your headshot photo. If you don't have a current one too, and I think we all know there's a couple people in our network we know, we see their picture. It was clearly 20, 30, 40 years ago <laughs> that the picture was taken. And we all age, and I'd rather, if I see you at a networking <laughs> event, I'd rather see you and say, is it Cody? Am I remembering correctly? Yes. Cody, I'd say, oh, Cody, I recognize you from your profile photo, and you can see that person right away. So if it's not current, <laughs> meaning within the past five years, um, the lovely lady in the next room can get a new headshot photo if you're for just 20 bucks today. All right, next thing we're gonna look for is we've got this header image that's in the background. And my guess is probably more than half of you, if not more in this room, have the standard LinkedIn background, which is teal blue with the interconnected dots and lines and things like that. And I want you, this is one of the things I want you to leave with today. Like, go back and as soon as you can, get a branded background in, in there. Um, there's a gentleman from the Leader Dots. He's not here today, is he? Because I said I was gonna call him out if he was. So let me show you David's profile as an example. And David works with um, the Leader Dogs organization, which is up in Rochester. And um, he does a lot of things with, um, I think it's there's a Harness the Power of Leadership is the name of the program. And when I first met with him, I think he had a teal or something like kind of generic in the background. And I said, guys, you know, the Leader Dogs, these puppies, and like that's, that's what your business is about. And that helps to create that emotional connection. And as a nonprofit, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to create that emotional connection with the people that your message resonates with. So why not use something branded in the background of your header there? And I like to tell people, this is kind of the equivalent of if you're driving on the side of 696, they've given you a free billboard to advertise or promote your business or to promote your brand. So let's think about putting, putting something branded in the background there. Now one thing to keep in mind is in this header background, um, you want to make sure kind of where the placement of text is. And you can see on the desktop that David's photo is left aligned. If I were to look up David on my mobile phone, his headshot photo would actually be right in the center here, covering the puppy's feet and a little bit um, of the bandana in the middle there. So make sure that you don't have any important text or important images that are in the middle. What I like to do, I'm gonna go back to my profile here, is I always like to put things, um, if there's any messages that I have, I like to put them where they're right aligned. So I don't ever worry about them being covered up in the center or in the left, okay? Was there a question, there was a hand? Yes? How do you edit the background? You know how to edit the photo, right? So same area, we're gonna click on this little pencil icon here, and then there's a little icon up here, little pencil icon. It's on the phone, you can't do it. Really I, on your phone, you cannot do the header. You, you have to do that. And yeah. you can't, actually, in your phone, you can't zoom in either. Um, on the header, I don't believe you can. On the picture. Oh, you can, not in the picture. Okay, I didn't, uh, yeah. So, um, what I would say is, you know, in terms of that header image in the background, if you have a marketing department or a business development team or something, say, hey, Brenda said I should get a branded header in my background, what can you guys give me? And have them create that image for you. If you mouse over, you'll see the exact dimensions, 1500 by 768, that's what they're looking for in terms of optimal size on there. I like to size it perfectly so I don't have to distort it or stretch it or anything out on there. And another thing I do is I will periodically change that because again, think about that billboard example. You drive by and it says um, five for five at McDonald's and you notice that for a week and then three weeks later you start to ignore that sign. And then all of a sudden the Arbinator comes out. Do you guys have the Arbinator? Has everybody tried that yet? It's like this Arby sandwich with like French fries and horse fries, it's like crazy. So you see the Arbinator sign on the side of the road and then you look at the billboard again. So it's the same thing with your, your LinkedIn header image. I like to swap that out. You know, every couple months a new message on there. Maybe for you it's promoting an upcoming event. Maybe it's promoting, um, you know, giving causes or, you know, we just like Giving Tuesday. Maybe there's other events that you could promote in the background there. All right, so those are the two main images at the top of your profile for, for imagery. Um, the next thing I want to look for is your, head so your headline on LinkedIn. And your headline is this <laughs> line of text that is right below your name. By default, LinkedIn will say job title at company. So if I didn't change mine, it would say marketing consultant at Miller Marketing. Well, that's great and all, but what I want you to think about is when people are doing searches on LinkedIn, and let's just say I just type in marketing consultant in my search here. 
Now I'm not going to come up in my own search because LinkedIn takes me out of this, um, but when I go on to my search results here, all I'm seeing in my search results, I'm seeing the headshot photo, I'm seeing the person's name, their headline, and then the area that they're in. So this headline field is actually an opportunity for you to differentiate yourself in the search results. If people are looking for your products, your services, your organization, your cause, and you're coming up in search results, and then all it says on here is development, or brand, brand ambassador or something, you've lost an opportunity to get a message out there. So what I like to do, and I use the I help blank with blank formula. I'm gonna go back to mine here for a second. So instead of saying marketing consultant at Miller Marketing, I do the I help blank with blank. So I help people and businesses with marketing and social media. Your formula is probably something different, right? So I want you to kind of think about, you know, generally speaking in terms of your headline, something that's a little bit broader, more descriptive, and you have 120 characters to use here. So how do you describe the role that you serve, the people that you help, the, um, the cause that you serve in your organization? And something a little bit more compelling than just the job title in there. Yes? Um, I use the I help model as well, but I have it after my title content writer. It's yeah. better to put I help blank to blank first and then So <laughs> what I want you to think about, so you've got, let me go to that search result again here. So in the um, search results that are coming up on here, you've got 120 characters total, and it cuts off after about 80. So my concern is if you put it at the end, it might get cut off, dot, 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 and then you're not seeing that in the search results. I think having content writer in there is important because if you want to be found for a specific job title or for specific keywords, there's an algorithm that LinkedIn has, and I don't have the exact playbook for everything, but I do know that if there's certain words that you want to be found for, you have to have them in several places on your profile, and the headline is one of those fields. So um, just think about what I like to look for in the headline is You've got 120 characters, use as many of them as you can, because why not, it helps you to come up in search results. But think about going front-loaded, top-heavy. You know, the most important phrases first. And if you're coming up in search results, what's gonna get them to click on you? You know, is it the content writer or is it the I help statement, okay? You can even test it out too, you know, try one week off and, and one week the other option too, okay? All right, so be descriptive and appealing. Um, it's what people see when they come up in search results. And another thing I would do is if you're struggling with what do I write for my headline, do searches on LinkedIn for other people who share your job title or other people in your industry and see what their headlines say on LinkedIn. And just start paying attention when you're looking at profiles, what are other people describing that in their headline on LinkedIn. All right, moving on, the next thing I wanna look at is your summary on LinkedIn. I'll probably open up another screen here. So I don't have to keep toggling back and forth. And your summary statement is this paragraph that is right below the top section of your LinkedIn profile. And I want you to, if you have your phone with you and your, your laptop, I want you to look at your profile in both, both views right now. Don't click on see more, I just want you to look at that summary statement. And if you have, again, if you have both your laptop and your phone, I want you to look at both of them right now. What you're gonna notice that in both versions, the desktop and on your phone, it's three <coughs> lines. And the difference here is that your phone actually cuts off about halfway through the second um, string of text here. So about 10 to 12 of those words of your summary statement appear on your phone, and about 25 to 42 of them are showing here on the desktop, okay? So you have 2,000 characters to use in your summary statement. And again, if we're thinking about profile optimization, coming up in search results using relevant keywords and phrases, I would say use as many of those 2,000 characters as possible. I think right now I have 1,980 characters in my summary statement. And my summary statement is long, and what I say is I write my summary statement in case you do click on show more, but I also write it in case you don't. Because the reality is, and I like to use this expression, people are lazy. I don't think that people are lazy, but it will help you remember this. Most people are not gonna take the time to click on show more. So whatever they see at the top of your profile is gonna make them make the decision whether they keep scrolling or they go back, right? So if I've hooked them in and then they click on show more, then I'm kind of bringing them through to learn more about me, that's great, right? But really write this in case they don't, okay? So a couple things to think about in your summary statement. Your summary statement is you talking to the LinkedIn network. So really it should be written in first person. It should not be the same summary statement that appears at the top of your resume because the goal of your <coughs> resume is to get a job. Your goal on LinkedIn is much different. Your goal on LinkedIn is probably 
business development, networking, prospecting. So it's different than the goal of that resume, okay? Um, your resume is in third person, your website is usually in third person, the marketing materials for your company is usually in third, in third person. Your LinkedIn should be first person, this should be I statements. So even if I had experienced marketing professional with 12 years of experience in event management, I would change that to I am a seasoned marketing professional with 12 years of event management experience. So just kind of change that up a little bit. So that's an easy thing you could do right now. Go into your summary and just change it to an I statement in the beginning. Really what I'd like to look for in the summary statement is tell us your story. You know, who are you as a person? If I were to meet you at a networking event, what would you tell me about what you do and why you're passionate about the field that you're in? Um, even better, let's think about I am your ideal prospect, donor, ambassador, and I'm interested in helping your organization. So think about that and through that lens, write your summary statement, right? Tell us about your organization, the, 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 or, the, the people and, and who you help and what you help as a result of your cause. Tell us about your background. How did you get involved in this field in the first place? You know, it's um, you know the, the the feeling of giving back to others that really drives me to excel in my career. So, so get a little bit of that story that is inside your summary statement, and then um, you can look at my summary to look at some of these other techniques too. I don't have all of these in the handouts, but what I like to do is no long paragraphs in marketing speak. We call this short, snackable chunks of copy. So nothing that's more than two to three sentences at a time. And you'll see I put paragraph breaks in between. I'll put all caps for my section headings on different categories of things I want to talk about. And then at the bottom of my summary, I'll also add in, I kind of tell you a little bit about myself. And um, anybody from American Cancer Society in the room here today? Okay, so um, I have this on my profile. At some point I will bump into somebody, and maybe one of you will help me with this. But um, so my personal goal, speak at TED at some point. Uh, serve in a meaningful way for the American Cancer Society in, my, in memory of my mom. So I want to do something more than giving. That's in on my profile. So it kind of peels back my professional exterior. It tells you a little bit about who I am as a person, right? And then I also include some philosophies on there. You know, a year from now, you'll wish you'd started today, that kind of gives you a glimpse into who I am as a person. And again, that just helps to tell you my story. That helps you to connect with me. Those statements, if they resonate with you, we immediately have that connection, okay? So feel free, look at my profile as often as you want. Um, I never get weirded out. I'm never like, why is this Cody guy looking at my profile five days in a row? Stop looking at it. Um, this is what I do for a living, and it's a compliment when people I present to look at my profile. So feel free to look at that technique. The last thing I want to mention before going on from this section is at the bottom of your summary, you have the opportunity to upload media. You can upload PDFs. You can upload JPEGs, you can upload flyers, you can upload postcards, you know, anything that you have a picture of. You can upload links to blogs, links to videos, links to web pages. So think about, you know, you're a brand ambassador for your organization. What do you want people to know? Um, it'd be great if we could say, well, they can just go to our website and get that information. Yeah, if they want to leave LinkedIn and go to your website, but why don't we make it easy for them and put it front and center right at the bottom of your summary? Okay? All right. Um, any questions about that before I move on? Yes? I noticed that um, over time, you'll, especially when you've been on LinkedIn for a while, they'll send you a lot of things about um, you know, paid content that you can have access to. Can you touch on that? As LinkedIn, well? are you talking about LinkedIn Premium? Yeah, LinkedIn. So they might, like you mentioned, how you can tell somebody who's looking at yeah. your profile. I know on the basic profile, I don't think you, you can. can. So what I usually tell people is, um, and I don't work for LinkedIn, I make no money on LinkedIn, I don't, you know, if I send business to LinkedIn, that's just, you know, out of goodness of my heart. Right. Um, in being independent of LinkedIn, what I say is that um, don't pay for premium on LinkedIn unless you know what you're getting out of it. Um, the basic job seeker premium, I think, is $29.99. Business premium is $59.99, and then it goes up from there. There's a recruiter version and a couple other versions as well. Um, don't, and then there's Sales Navigator. I think that's $79 or $89 or something, too. So don't pay for it unless you know what you're getting out of it. And usually what I say is you're gonna to start to hit some walls on things that you wanna get access to in the free version that you can't, and then you have to decide, to, does it make business sense to invest in that? So I do use premium, but I do LinkedIn coaching, and it helps me to get unlimited searches on LinkedIn. It also allows me to look at everybody who's looked at my profile on LinkedIn. And what I'll do is once a week, I'll look at people who look at my profile, and anybody who's a first level connection that I haven't talked to in a while, maybe somebody like Tracy who I've sent a proposal to and she's looking at my profile and then I might reach out to her and say, hey Tracy, how are you doing? You know, let me know if you'd like to move forward, you know, whatever, I might nudge that. Or if it's a second or third level, that means they're not connected to me. 
then what I do is I will send them an invitation to connect. And I wouldn't say, and I'm sorry, what's your name again? Mm -hmm. Amy, I wouldn't say, hey Amy, I saw you looked at my profile on LinkedIn, let's connect. I wouldn't do that. I would instead look at Amy's profile and put together a thoughtful invitation. And I always, and I think we're jumping ahead a little bit here too, but I'll, I'll repeat this again. Um, so what I like to do is make the invitation all about Amy. I'm gonna look at her profile, I'm gonna figure out two to three things that we have in common or that interest me on her profile. And I like to address right away if we've met or not. So in this case, I might say, hi Amy, we met today at the Southfield Chambers event at the American Cancer Society. I see that we're both in Metro Detroit and we have many common connections. Let's connect on LinkedIn. My goal is to get Amy to accept my invitation and LinkedIn Premium allows me to do that, to connect with people who looked at me. And I actually have had some clients come through that they stumbled upon my profile because of a status update or something else and they looked at my profile but they didn't invite me to connect. And I reached out to them and that helped to, to kind of bring them through. Yeah. Is there a minimum or a maximum of how many emails or connections you can make? Because somebody yelled at me for connecting with them and said that I don't have, you know, you're using one of my... Oh, number of connections? Yeah. I, I want to say it's like 20,000 or some or high number on there. Me for like using email. No. Um, you, you can have a maximum of 250 invitations that you've sent out at a time. I know this because I got in LinkedIn jail. <laughs> I had too many. I was like, this. I'd like. I reached the limit of the internet. Yes. <laughs> um, and once you reach 250 that aren't accepted, if they're accepted, they just keep going through. But if they aren't accepted, they say, sorry, you can't send any more invitations right now. I, I figured out a workaround. You just go into your sent and you delete some old invitations and then you clear that up. Um, but in terms of maximum number of connections, it's pretty high. I think it's like 20,000, something like that. So they may have maybe had some wrong information or <laughs> there might be something else at play there. All right, so um, moving on from summary, the next thing I would have you look at on your LinkedIn profile is let's scroll down here to your experience section. And this is really important. A lot of times when I'm looking at profiles, I feel like this is a missed opportunity if you haven't filled this out. So first things first, Look next to your employer, make sure that your employer logo is next to your name, bless you, there on LinkedIn. If not, it may be the case that you don't have a company page yet on LinkedIn, um, or you may have a company page and you're just not properly linked. Um, if it's not linked, you know, go into the pencil icon, delete out the company name, and start to type it in until it populates. And the benefit there is once it's linked onto your profile, if I click on that company logo, then it will take me over to the company page on LinkedIn. And the company page is kind of the equivalent of a mini version of your website. Um, people that are in a social network don't really want to leave that social network. They're in LinkedIn mode. They don't want to go off onto your website. If they wanted to go to your website, they would have went there first, right? So they want to stay in LinkedIn. So it gives them the opportunity to click onto your company page. But let's say they don't even want to go through that effort. What if they've landed on your profile and they're scanning through your profile? Why not start with a one to two sentence description, what is your company? And really easy way to get that description is just go on your company page and say, you know, pull that first couple sentences there and put that description in your experience section. Um, the purpose of the, today's talk is using LinkedIn as a nonprofit ambassador. And really easy way is just using traffic, people that are already coming to your LinkedIn profile to promote your business. So the formula I like to use in terms of experience is describe your organization and who you can help or what, what causes you're helping, then describe your role. As chief development officer, I dot, dot, dot. So again, think in terms of if you have your ideal target audience reading your profile and you're trying to say, yep, I'm the person you should talk to. Use those words and phrases in there. At the bottom of um, the experience, what I like to add, I'm gonna click on um, expanding mine here. So you can see this. And again, this is a technique that helps with <coughs> profile optimization. What I like to do is put a, a list of keywords in, in a paragraph I just titled it specialties, and I put those keywords with comments in between them. And I don't put this in there for you as a human being to read. I put this in so that I can come up in search results on LinkedIn. And you can see, if you look at my profile, I have a specialties block in my summary statement at the top and in every one of my employers. For that reason, I come up in a lot of search results for those keywords that I'm putting in there. It is perfectly okay to repeat some of those keywords, and actually redundancy works in your favor on LinkedIn. The more often you use those keywords and phrases in different places throughout your profile, the more likely you will come up in search results for those keywords, okay? So that kind of covers that, and then you can also put media in each of your experience sections as well. 
So in addition to putting media underneath the summary at the top, you can put media under your experience section as well. So you've really got two places to promote your organization in terms of imagery and visuals and things like that. Okay. Anybody using that right now in media? Anybody putting anything on their profile? Good. And then changing it out periodically with new, new messages and looking at other things to put in there? Okay. Good. <laughs> Maybe. You're, you're all like, don't look at me right now. <laughs> but if they're relevant, I say keep them on if it's you know, an overview sheet, things like that. But try to put you know, fresh things on there every now and again if you can too. All right. So moving down, um, the other thing I'd like to look at in terms of optimizing your profile is um, let's go down to, do, 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 to the chips. recommendation section. Fire so, what's that? Fire up chips. Fire up chips, yes. <laughs> um, so recommendations on LinkedIn um, are a really powerful way of getting testimonials for your products, your services, the programs that you work with. So what I like to look for are you can give recommendations and then recommendations can be given to you. So the both of them show on your profile. So received and given. Received are recommendations that people have given you. So if you don't have any on your profile, think about right now, there has to be a handful of people in your network. You have to be connected to them on LinkedIn. But these are the people that will say, Brenda, if you ever need anything, let me know. I think you're awesome. I think the work that you're doing is awesome. Those are the people you say, Ashley, I do need something. You know, Tanya, could you give me a LinkedIn recommendation? And I sometimes will even offer, I'll even help write it for you. You know, I'll, I'll put that text in there for them as well. Okay. So I like to look for one to two in the current year and think about vendors, think about clients, think about donors, think about ambassadors, coworkers, former bosses, current bosses, employees, who can say nice things about you. If somebody wants to do business with your organization, um, seeing those recommendations, that helps to kind of validate, yep, this is a good organization, that's a good person. This is somebody I want to do business with, okay? That whole concept of social proof, we believe more what other people say about your business, then we believe what you say about your business, right? Just we like to see what other people have to say there. Um, the given, I think, is actually even more important, being that a lot of you are in nonprofit fields. Uh, I actually like to see more recommendations that you have given than recommendations that you've received. Um, so think about if you look at somebody's profile and they have 25 recommendations that other people have given them and they've given zero, right? So think about that message at that sense. It's all about me, 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 and it's not about helping my community, right? I'm a big believer in the whole concept of social media karma, paying it forward, helping others, and doing so with no expectation that they will return that favor to you, but I know that they will, and I know that the universe rewards you know, those good acts. So kind of paying it forward and helping others in the form of giving recommendations can be very powerful. And I even think about when you're giving recommendations on LinkedIn, think about strategic recommendations. People who have large networks, when they accept your recommendation and it goes on their LinkedIn profile, everybody who goes on their LinkedIn profile is gonna see your name, okay? So think about that, you know, strategic recommendations and try to get one or two recommendations for the current year there. All right. There's a lot more that I could cover in terms of profile optimization, but I, what I'd like to do now is go into a discussion about building your network on LinkedIn. A couple things we've, we've touched on before, but we'll, we're actually gonna practice some of these techniques right now too. So um, what we're gonna talk about first is the, the act of personalizing invitations on LinkedIn. How many people in the room here are personalizing every invitation they send out? Awesome. On mobile too? Not just on desktop? Every time? Okay. And I would say, on the whole, I personalize every invitation I send. I'm gonna give you a little caveat and we're gonna practice this technique in a little bit. But really powerful here, personalizing the invitation, it will help to get more of your invitations accepted on LinkedIn. And even more importantly, then you have some dialogue that's been started with that new connection. So what I want you to do, if you're not yet connected to me, I want you to practice this technique on me, sending me a personalized invitation. If you're already connected with me, turn to your neighbor to your right or left, front or back, and find somebody else in the room, and I want you to look up their profile on LinkedIn, and I want you to follow these, follow these uh, steps along with me. Do not click on connect until I tell you. Uh, was it? I want to find somebody I'm not yet connected to. Here we go. Okay, so I want you to be on their profile. On the, follow along on desktop first, and then mobile, I'll show you guys just in a second here. So on desktop only, follow me along. Um, desktop only, when you click on the connect button here, then you have the opportunity to add a note, okay? So I always like to use the hi first name, have we met or not, 
one or two things that are either interesting about their profile or that we have in common, and then I ask for the invitation. So in this case, it might be, hi Josh, we haven't met, but we share many common connections on LinkedIn, including you know, maybe the person whose post I saw him on. And we're also both in Michigan. Let's connect on LinkedIn. So for all of you, if you're practicing on me, the, the technique may, may be, hi Brenda, we met today at the Southfield Chamber event when you were talking about LinkedIn, let's connect on LinkedIn. Or if it's somebody else in the room, to your neighbor, hi Amy, we met today at the Southfield Chamber event. So I want you to practice that. That's the desktop version. Okay, mobile phone people, are you ready for this? So you've got your phone up. What I want you to do, and I don't have my phone in front of me, I'm gonna have to look over your shoulder. Are you on a profile for somebody you're not yet connected to? Uh, so what I want you to look for <laughs> is not, do, do not click on the connect button. If you click on connect on mobile, it's gonna send the invitation off without having the first it does, yeah. Okay, so if you did that with somebody, do, find somebody else's profile. So you're looking either for the more buttons or the three dots. Okay, so again, if we're on our mobile phone, we're personalizing the invitation, I want you to look on the profile, look for the more button or the three dots. When you click on that, there's gonna be a menu of options that come up. One of those options is personalize an invite or personalize an invitation, are you seeing that? Okay, and that's where you personalize my mobile. So no longer can you say, well, Brenda, I only had my phone with me and I wanted to send it off quickly and I couldn't figure out how to personalize. Does anybody need help with that? I'll walk around. You guys good? I just have a quick question. Yeah. Sometimes when I try to connect to people, I automatically go to, like, how do you know this person? Yeah, it's like, some things, there's things that are in the settings. Um, they may have it set up that they are only accepting invitations from people that they know, or you have to have their email address in order to connect with them. Oh, okay. So, so it's it something on their end, it's nothing on your end. Oh, okay. It's something they have in their privacy. So click on, okay, so it's either three dots. In your case, it's a drop down arrow, little arrow, and then personalize invite. Oh, there you go. Okay. So I've seen it on different phones. I'm glad you saw that. I've seen it on different phones um, say different things. More, three dots, or sometimes it's that little drop down arrow. So now you personalize an invitation, okay? So from this moment forward, every invitation you send on LinkedIn, personalize that invitation. And again, my formula is hi, first name, have we met or not, and then find one or two items from the profile that are interesting or that we have in common, um, and then I ask for the invitation. The invitation is not the place that I sell. The invitation is not the place that I do any asking or promoting or anything along those lines. The invitation, the goal of an invitation is to get your invitation accepted. Then, once they've accepted the invitation, then I continue the dialogue. Then I might say, hi Amy, thanks for accepting my invitation. My business is Miller Marketing and I help people in businesses with uh, marketing and social media specializing in LinkedIn. When you get a minute, tell me a bit about what you do and how you're leveraging LinkedIn. You know, so now I'm getting a conversation going back and forth. Now most people won't continue the conversation, but people that are interested in my services, they may say, actually I'm looking for somebody to help me with marketing or LinkedIn. Or they may come back and say, you know, my business, I work for the American Cancer Society and we're doing a lot of fundraising. Um, I see you had something on your profile, could you help share this event? Absolutely, I'll help you share that event, you know? So there's a conversation, there's a dialogue that's going there. Okay. Got a question for you. Yep. What do you do in response to when you send out an invitation, you accept an invitation, you start dialogue, yeah. and you never respond? I, you know, there's, there's uh, 562 million members on LinkedIn, that's one person. I just keep going to the next person on the list. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I don't, because they're not, either they're not a good prospect, they're, they may not be active on LinkedIn, um, maybe they don't want to continue the conversation, they're just not open and receptive to that, and we've all dealt with those pushy salespeople that, you know, you give them the benefit of the doubt, you accept the invitation, they try to message you, you don't respond, you're like, they'll get the hint, and then they email you, and you get on their email list, and then they're emailing you once a week, and then you have to block them. So I don't want to be that guy, you know? Um, I want to be the kind of person, like, the opportunity's there, I'm going to put it in front of you on the table, if you're interested in continuing the conversation, you'll pick it up, and we'll continue the conversation. If not, move on to the next person. Like I said, 562 million members, so more than one person. Yep. I tried to put one way, I swear, which I thought was great. Um, if, if you're going on a date with somebody yeah. and they ask you to marry them on yes. the first date, you're freaked out. So that's you a good have to date people. <laughs> yeah, and it's the same thing on LinkedIn. You're you're basically courting people. You know, it's a professional networking site where you're trying to do business with them potentially, and you're not going to go and make a sale on the first invitation. And and what are the statistics now? It's eight to ten contacts before you actually get a conversation going for, for business development. And same thing on LinkedIn. I like to get that dialogue going first, earn their trust, 
get the invitation accepted, get some dialogue going, and then maybe two to three steps in, that's when I do a little bit of that, that pushing and asking. But that, that it's a great analogy. When you go on a date with somebody on the first date, you don't ask them to marry you that night, right? <laughs> you go on several dates, you meet their family, you figure out are they crazy or not. <laughs> Can I picture myself with this person? So it's a longer um, term thing. And I think, you know, shift your activities on LinkedIn to think about it the same way. It's about relationship building. It's about visibility. It's about building trust within your network so people want to dial in and pay attention to what you're talking about. All right, so now we're going to try another technique. If you have your mobile phone, I want you to bring your phone out right now. And usually I say personalize every invitation. And this is the little asterisk that I will say you don't have to do it um, in this instance. And this is using this new feature that LinkedIn has rolled out. So in your mobile phone, click on the network icon, which is the two avatar of two people. In my phone, I think it's along the bottom menu bar. Click on the avatar of those two people, and that shows you your, your network connections. Um, when you do that, I'm going to look over your shoulder here. The two people right there. The two people icon. At the top of your phone, you should see Find Nearby, and it's like a little uh, radial symbol. So click on Find Nearby at the top. You will have to enable your Wi-Fi, your location settings. But basically, leave this open and keep this open for maybe 30 seconds or so. Because what's going to happen is anybody who is in LinkedIn who is open in this area of the app at this particular point in time is going to come up. So everybody that's in this room, if we all agree, we're going to accept invitations from people that send us invitations today on LinkedIn. If you send them out, you can't personalize here, but you can do basically do mass invitations for a group of people that are in the room. Okay? Are you guys seeing it coming up on your phone yet? Did you backtrack just Where's the location in your reference? So this is only on your phone. Oh, only on your phone because it's like a location-based service. So on your phone, you're looking for the picture of the two avatar, the two people next to each other, which is your connections. And then the very top of the phone, click on Find Nearby. Okay, and then leave it open. Don't close it out because it's going to take everybody's phones a couple seconds here to kind of cycle up through that part. And then we should see that here in a second. And if you agree, you know, like I said, you can click on Invite, 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 but just know that everybody in the room here is going to be doing that. Okay. What I do is I actually pull that up and I take screen captures of the people and then I go back and I personalize invitations later. But I'm an overachiever, you know. <laughs> so are most right. of us. Right? <laughs> there you go. Okay. Any questions about that feature before I move on? You yes. You have to have some kind of beat by my location or something? Yes. You have to enable your location settings. On settings or on LinkedIn? So there should be in there should be a link that says enable. Are you seeing that? On, on my settings. Yeah. So go back though. So once you invite Yep, another question in the back? No, I need to find do location. Yep. Turn, can you turn it on? Find my location. Oh, find your location. Yeah, so you have to turn that on. Yep. <laughs> okay, no problem. <laughs> Well, I, might, I mean, I can work LinkedIn, but it's not. Oh, well, I'm the first one. Do they have to be in the so same I, area of the app with it opened up? Yeah, that's why I'm saying let's everybody open our phone and keep them in this area right now because as soon as you close it, you're no longer in that list anymore. So it's not like a find nearby where it shows everybody who's in the okay. room. Okay. It's actually a find nearby of people who are in this opening of the app at the same point in time. Oh, right. is that often that people do that in your area? No, but that's why I like to point it out because if you're at a networking group and you want to grow your connections quickly and it's a closed group and you all know you're doing this and you all want to stay connected, it's a really easy way of doing the mass connections. Yeah. Okay. So now we have a new party trick. You can go home and show people and they'll think you're really smart and you'll make new connections. All right. So moving on. Um, this whole concept of, someone asked a question about finding time. How do you find the time in your business day to, to get things done? And what I say is we all have 24 hours in a day, right? And everybody has the same 24 hours, regardless if you're Beyonce or the Pope or Oprah or whoever you are in the world. Everybody has 24 hours in a day. If it is important to you, you will find the time to fit it in. What I say is if you want to get really good at LinkedIn, if you want to be really effective on LinkedIn, I would say commit 15 minutes every business day on LinkedIn. 15 minutes is not a lot. 15 minutes could be broken up into five 
three, you know, three five minute segments. Maybe you arrive to a meeting early, nobody else is in the room yet. Instead of going through your to-do list for the hundredth time, why not pull out your phone and focus on LinkedIn for five minutes? What I like to do the first time I open up my phone on my LinkedIn is I will look through my network feed and I see what are other people in my network talking about. And I'm gonna like some things, I'm gonna comment on a few things, and maybe if there's something really relevant, I might share it. Now here's a, a really cool thing too, guys. If you comment on things on your LinkedIn in your homepage feed, I want you to comment with five or more words. So don't just say, great article. Say, great article, hope you're doing well. Great article, thanks for sharing something. So five or more words. So five or more words helps to wake up that LinkedIn algorithm and it says this is an important post, people are talking about it. And it helps to keep that post hanging out in the homepage feed a little bit longer. Then if somebody comments back to that, I like to keep the conversation going. So if I post something and one of you comment on it, I'm going to reply back to you because I keep that conversation going a little bit longer. And I, I guarantee if you are connected with me on LinkedIn, I'm going to be one of those people every time you open up your LinkedIn, I am in your homepage feed, right? Mm -hmm. People in the room who've seen me present. And what I try to do is I'm not selling. Very rarely do I sell on LinkedIn. I'm doing more telling. I'm sharing things that I'm seeing, articles that I'm reading, marketing tips. I have a couple days of the week I do a, a Tuesday, I do a Take Action Tuesday, and I'm always promoting the Job Seeker Network, helping people who are in between successes, and I share tips, and maybe sometimes I say, hey, post your job openings here if you have them. On Friday, I do a Friday shout, and I pick one person in my network, and I talk about that person, and I say, invite this person to connect with you on LinkedIn. What you can do is anytime you are at a conference, an event, a workshop, where there is somebody in the room speaking in front of the room, get comfortable with that camera. Bring that camera out. Take a picture of the person who is presenting in the front of the room, because guess what? Presenters have large networks. When you take a picture of a presenter and you tag them and you share that on LinkedIn, that will come up in my pro homepage feed on LinkedIn and my first level connections are gonna see your post. That increases your visibility on LinkedIn. Sure, it helps me with my visibility, but it really helps all of you with your visibility. And this is not just something I'm saying do this for me. I'm saying do this every time you go to an event and there's somebody in the front of the room speaking. What I will often do is if I'm at a conference, there's multiple people throughout the day, I'll take maybe 10 to 12 pictures of every presenter, and then I'll look at my phone at the end of the day, I'll pick the best one, because I guarantee somebody's gonna take a picture and post me and my face is gonna be like, you know, that weird <laughs> post that you get, because you just got one, so take a couple. Um, but I'll go through and then I'll post like five or six pictures of all of the presenters, and here's what I do, and I do this selfishly, because I, I don't know about you guys, I take notes and then I can't find my notes anywhere. I'm like, where did I write that? So what I do is I take notes in my phone app, and I say, here are my key takeaways from each presenter, and then at the end of the day, I might say, today I attended the Southfield Chambers event, and here, um, and here are my five key takeaways from the speaker. And I might put speaker one, you know, put their name, tag them in the post, and then what was the key takeaway from that person? Speaker two, speaker three, four, five. So it's giving me the benefit of you know, selfishly remembering where my notes are so I don't have to look them up again. And it's giving me also that benefit of promoting to my network what I'm doing. It's kind of showing you what am I interested in, what am I learning about, and thereby positioning myself as an expert in those areas because I'm always in tune with paying attention to those trends, right? So that's a really easy way and that could be 15 minutes easily. Um, what I like to see in terms of LinkedIn is a status update minimally once per week. So if you're not sure which day of the week to post, think about your website traffic patterns. If you get the most website visitors on a Monday, post earlier in the week. If you are in the um, service industries and you get the most traffic on a weekend, post later in the week. But try to post at least once a week. Um, once a day is even better, and I try to post once per business day. That's what I strive for in terms of posting on LinkedIn. All right, so those of you who've heard me present before, you know my never technique, right? So if you follow this technique, you will never post the same way ever again. And never is an acronym, it's on your sheet in front of you. So when you're posting a status update, think about these four letters. N stands for new information. What are you informing or educating people about? So that's the end, the new information that you're sharing. And think about why does your audience care? This isn't about you selling, this is about you telling and sharing and informing. The E is you want to engage by tagging P 
people and or organizations and you can do multiple people so if you take a picture of me today what I would encourage you to do is tag you know might say something about listening to an outstanding presentation by at Brenda Meller of at Meller marketing um, regarding LinkedIn strategies thank you at Tanya and where's Tanya at? she's in the back of the room so tag Tanya of the at Southfield Chamber because then you're getting the benefit of Tanya in the Southfield Chamber seeing your post as well you see what I'm doing here and you're paying it forward, you're helping all of these people, you're getting visibility for yourself, okay? Let me finish this one thing. Mm -hmm. And then the A is the call to action. What do you want people to do as a result of reading the post? In this case, it might be learn more about Southfield Chamber's upcoming events by visiting their website, okay? And you could put the, that right in the status update. Sometimes what I do is I actually put the link in comments because of the fact that LinkedIn doesn't like sending traffic off of LinkedIn, and sometimes they'll penalize your post if you put that outside link in a status update. If you put it in the comments, they don't care. Okay, so that's a little technique. So if you are putting a call to action in the form of visiting an external website, if you're saying learn more about the Southfield Chamber by going to their website, and if I put that website in my status update, the algorithm penalizes me because I'm sending people off of LinkedIn. So what I do instead is I say uh, visit the Southfield Chamber's website link in comments, and then the first comment I'll say here's the link to the Southfield Chamber website. Uh, what, okay. What if you said check out the Southfield Chamber's LinkedIn page? You could. And that'll yeah. that'll keep the tag within good. LinkedIn. Okay. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. So I I post my blog entries um, as articles or, or posts, yep. and I will have a link in the main post to my article on my website. Okay. So you're saying I should put that link in the comment section? I, I would try it both ways just oh. to see and then pay attention to the number of profile or the number of views of that post. Um, I don't always do it. Sometimes I put it right in and sometimes I put it outside okay. of the comments. So a little bit. Yeah, and there's um there's a gentleman I'm connected to, he's in the UK, his name's John Aspirian, he's a technical copywriter. You may actually want to you're a content writer, you said, right? Mm -hmm. You may want to connect with him, um, competitors but over the pond, mm -hmm. so to speak. <laughs> and he always has really great tips on LinkedIn and one of the things he shares is post a status update and then go back in and edit and add the web address in later because the algorithm reads the first thing that you post. It doesn't read edits to the second or third. What's his name again? John Esperian, um, J-O-H-N, I believe it's E-S-P-I-R-I-A-N. Um, he's on LinkedIn all the time. If you can't find him, just message me and I'll, I'll tag his profile. All right, so Neva, new information, engage by tagging people and or organizations. V is the visual, so again, get comfortable with taking pictures of people at events. Sometimes if I'm not sure, what I might do is I might take a couple pictures kind of quietly, and then I might go up to the person and I'll say, Amy, do you mind if I share a picture with you on LinkedIn? And Amy's like, of course, go ahead and share it. Um, but, or I'll get there early and I'll, you know, I'm in social media, so I'm comfortable doing this. I'll get there early and say, hey, Cody, I see you're presenting today. I'm gonna take a couple pictures of you. And Cody's like, yeah, go for it, you know, have at it kind of thing, okay? But try to get comfortable getting those pictures and whether your visual is a photo, a video, illustration, um, something, an infographic, visuals help to, to get some of those posts read. All right, and we're gonna finish off and then I wanna um, open it up to questions. Did I answer your question though, Tracy? No, uh, a quick question. When you said at Brenda Miller, yeah. is that Brenda Miller? One no, word? it's not one word. So what I do when I'm tagging a person, you wanna go kinda slow in the, um, the tag. So start typing it at Brenda slowly. It should recognize which Brenda you're talking about. If not, you have to just put a space between the first and the last name. What I do is I actually put a dash because it tells LinkedIn I'm still talking about one person. I'm not going on to another tag yet, right? Okay. So I'll do at Brenda dash Meller and then wait for, you have to wait because LinkedIn kind of, they're in the back room and somebody's got to smack them on the head and say, somebody's tagging someone. So and then it comes up in the, the field there. Can I tag <laughs> you know people I mean? I'm not connected with? You can. Okay. Um, there is a setting in LinkedIn that you can turn off the ability for you to be tagged on LinkedIn because some people don't want to be tagged, but most people don't turn that off. Thank you. Okay. That was a problem. Yeah, just go slow when you're tagging if you're not seeing the name. And I will periodically do searches. My last name is Meller, M-E, and I will periodically do searches. And sometimes people tag me as Brenda Miller, mm -hmm. and it didn't tag because they're that's not the right person. So I will go into the comment, and then I'll message you and say, hey, the tag didn't work, and I'll help you out with that. I thought you were Mueller. Mueller? Nope, Meller. Keller, but with, <laughs> Keller, but with an M. Yeah. 
Do you use a social media consolidator like Hootsuite or something? To I, track? Yeah, I, I do use Buffer, but I don't use Buffer for everything. Um, and there are some limitations with it. Even like with using Buffer, if I post things onto LinkedIn, I can't add tags of people and companies. So sometimes I might post an article out and then I go back in and edit and add the tags in there. It can certainly supplement. Usually I use the scheduling tools for company page posts. And my own personal posts, I do my organic posts that way. Does Buffer work for personal posts? Yes. Uh, on all across the board, Facebook? Um, face, I use it for Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter for personal. Yeah. Okay. yeah Planoly, yep, that's a good tool for Instagram. Yeah. All right, so moving into the final, and what I'm gonna do now is if you're interested in the pie drawing, if you got here a little bit late, um, I talked about I love coffee, pie, and chocolate, and I always bring pie with me to give away. Um, so I have a couple of mini apple pies and a couple of mini cherry pies. If you're interested, I'm just gonna pass this around just if you wouldn't mind dropping your business card on it and then I will do a drawing here at the end. That's All great. right, so for nonprofits, the last thing I wanna talk about today is how to empower your volunteers. And a um, couple simple techniques here. Um, one really easy way, you probably all have boards, and these are all volunteer um, board service positions, and you pick people from the business community who have large networks, who maybe have you know, um, the ability to help you with time, talent, and treasure, right? And that's the reason that you choose them. A really um, easy way to help amp up the visibility of your organization is ask your board members to add their board affiliation to their LinkedIn profile. And what I would say is have them put it in their experience section because then it's kind of top of their profile. If you put it under volunteer, it's a little bit lower in on the profile. And I've even had people do it in both places because you never know, they're gonna look here or are they gonna look there, right? And what I would say is give them a description of what they can put in on your organization. So the American Cancer Society is, I serve in the board and I help the board buy. So kind of letting people in their network know. And again, for executives, they love when you serve things up on a silver platter and you give it right to them on a little dish and say, here's exactly how you do it and walk them through it. Um, if you're interested, I do offer training for boards and teams and I can help your, your boards with that too. Keep that in mind. Another thing is think about asking people for their stories, whether they are people who have benefited from your organizations, um, whether they are people who have donated to your organization, they have a compelling reason that they're involved with your organization, um, whether they are employees who really just love the cause, you know, the, the guy who works for the, um, the leader dog, you know, people, they breed puppies and they've got these puppy trainers and they would love to share the story. This is why I do this and this is why I give back. Ask people to share their stories and, you know, you can use those as blog topics on LinkedIn. You can use those as status updates. Maybe it's just a short little shout out to Tim Smith and here's why Tim is involved with our organization and you tag him on his LinkedIn. But it's a way to kind of do that, doing that storytelling technique and bringing people in from your network there. Um, and then the last thing I'm gonna just uh, mention on the bottom of this sheet, I'm not gonna say it out loud because the Facebook Live people don't get benefit to this, but I do have a little offer. If you're interested, free, let me know and I'd be happy to schedule that with you. Um, and at this point, I'm gonna get the pie thing and I'm drawn in just a second here and we'll open it up for any questions, anything I didn't cover off today. Or Casey, um, for your uh, company page yes. or organization page, can other people write on that page? Um, they can comment on your posts, okay. but they can't. It's not like a, a Facebook group where anybody can put things in the timeline. So when you say you want people to share, do you want them to email their stories to you and then you as the admin post yes. it? Yes. Yes, you could do that. And then speaking of company page, I didn't show this technique. I'm gonna show you this right now. How many people don't have a company page on LinkedIn yet here in the room? And many of you, my guess is um, working for a nonprofit, you have a lean budget, maybe you don't have a marketing department or a social media person, so you can do this yourself right now. Go under your work icon, and all the way down to the bottom, you're gonna see a link for create a company page. This is only something you can do on desktop. I don't think you have the ability to do this on mobile. Click on create a company page, and then we're just gonna choose, um, I'm just gonna put small business as an example here. You're gonna type in your business name, and I'm just gonna just to do this as an example, ABC company, and you see when I do that, LinkedIn automatically starts to tabulate this as a, a page address in here. There are a couple of required fields. I'm not gonna follow this all the way through because I'm not gonna set up a fake company page right now, but this is all you do, you follow the steps through, you have to select your industry, your company size, company type, 
after you do that, you can you have your company page. Later on, you can go back in and upload a logo. You can put a branded header in the background. You can add an about description. You know, maybe give it to somebody who is on your board who works in marketing who might be saying, hey, how else can I help you out? Have them help you set up that company page. And then once you get that all set up, then make sure that that logo that you have set up is linked onto your experience section as well. They used to make this really difficult. You had to have so many connections and verify your email and all these. Now it's like super, super simple. This is all you do, right? Tools, yes. So showcase page is basically if you think about an organization like General Motors, which is the parent company, and then there's a Chevrolet brand and Chrysler and all these other sub brands that live underneath it. Um, so showcase pages, they live as their own page, as a company page. They just can't be linked to a profile as an experience section. So it's kind of a way to keep, if you have multiple brand names under a parent company, it's a way to keep them all together on there. Okay. Any other questions? Yes? If we um, send up a, a company page under our experience, what you're saying, yep. um, do we become the de facto? Um, the person who sets that up is the admin, and really good point here too, I always recommend there's at least two full-time employees at your company who are admins of your company page. Um, two at all point, points in time because inevitably somebody will leave and if you're the person that set up the page and maybe you left not on good terms and you don't want to be helpful, <laughs> you know, then you can't get into that company page anymore. There are some steps you can contact LinkedIn but it's too many hoops to jump through. So I always like to say two admins minimum, um, full-time employees, if you're outsourcing it to an agency or something else, do make sure that you yourself have access to it as well. Um, because if you change agencies, you want to have the ability to take people off of there. So you can identify admin yeah. Okay. So when you uh, let me just show you my company page. So if I go into manage page, and I can only see manage page if I'm an admin of my page right now. And then if you go into where are we at on here? Admin tools. And then you can go on page admins, and it's going to show you who are people who have admin access to your page. Okay. All right. Did the pie thing make its way all the way around? Yeah, I think it's the business card? Okay, Tanya, can you help me? Sure. Okay, we're gonna do a drawing for four pies. Did everybody get their business card in? Just pick four and then I'll just uh, randomly pick them one by one. There we go. And everybody get a chance for a headshot photo? She's still here if you have it. for this one. All right. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna go random order. And while I'm doing this, um, Maxwell, where are you? He's getting his headshot. Okay, so when Maxwell comes back in the room, Maxwell's my new intern at, hey Maxwell, hey, how you doing? So Maxwell is my new intern at Meller Marketing. He just started yesterday and um, I said, hey, can you come out on uh, Wednesday and see me? So he's here today. All right, Cora Small. Cora? Cora, you want a pie? Would you like apple or cherry? Apple. Apple pie. All right. Brittany Hobbs. Right here. Would you like apple or cherry, Brittany? Apple. Apple. Okay, now all we have left is cherry. So we have... Jennifer Bale, Jennifer, and <laughs> Diana Piegler. Diana, congratulations. And again, personal size, so you don't have to share, but you certainly can if you'd like to. All right. Thank you. Okay, um, I think we're at time. Um, would you have another question? Go ahead. I do. Yeah. Uh, I want people, I want to be able to show my LinkedIn different groups I'm members of. Okay. So you said put it in your experience, and then I just saw featured groups. On the company page, are you, uh, on the company page, you can feature groups. Okay. And on your profile, personal profile, you can join groups. Join groups. Yes. So if you wanted to join a group on LinkedIn, and those would show under that um, interest section at the very dot bottom of your profile. Okay. Are you talking about like a professional membership, like a Southfield Chamber? Or yeah. Okay. So Southfield Chamber, you could join the. Um, where's Tanya? Right here. Do you have a? a it's open. Group? A group? Yeah. So um, some organization groups on LinkedIn are closed, meaning they've got to make sure you're a member of, and others you can just invite, you know, to be added to that group. But I want it to be featured. Yeah. On my page. So what I do, you can put it under organizations, but what I do is I actually put it under my um, volunteer section as well. Let me just show you this real quick. Um, because of the okay. fact that in the organizations, it's kind of tucked away at the bottom of your profile and you don't really see it too much. So, volunteer. It's over here. Um, organizations, I have them listed on the bottom, which is where LinkedIn tells you to put them, but I also put mine under 
Um, where's that here? Volunteer experience. So I'm a member of the Detroit Economic Club. I put that, you know, mm -hmm. as a feature because I volunteer my time to go out there and I speak at that organization too. So. Okay, all right, guys, I think that's all I have. So I would look forward to connecting with you on LinkedIn. If you have any additional questions, feel free to message me at any point and um, be happy to help you out and do check out that offer that's at the bottom of your flyer there. Okay? Do we have a round of applause?